Hey, so I wanted to demo my vertical modular construction uh, scheme that I was talking about on Reddit. Uh, you can kind of see an example of it over here. Uh, these uh, have gone through some iterations. You'll see some differences between different ones that I have constructed before. Um, so what I'm producing is probably going to be slightly different than than what you see in the distance, but like I follow this pattern uh, pretty much everywhere, and I have been kind of working on it uh, over time, uh, hopefully making it better. Um, and so um, I just wanted to demo this basically by making like a little mining node here. Uh, typically, this is what I do when I uh, have uh, you know like some uh, common. Uh, resource that I want to mine, like, uh, you know, copper or iron or something like that, where, um, in sort of like my own conception of how to do, uh, base construction, I, I usually start off making a tower on top of these, uh, and, uh, using that to produce ingots, um, so I usually start off by producing my, like, a, a six by three foundation platform for this. So um, there are a couple reasons for that. Um, very often, uh, just a minor thing, I, I put this tower down here uh, because it's really helpful for constructing blueprints in particular. Um, so like very often when you're doing this, like you need to be able to kind of look, look down over everything in order to get like a good uh, bead on um, you know, like where you should actually be like aiming and uh, when constructing blueprints, um, because they are sometimes made of many parts, uh, you want to be really sure that you're placing them in the right location. And being able to view from above is like really important um, to be able to get a good sense of that. So you can see to begin with, like this is you know, a couple of pillars that are raising things up a bunch. Uh, of course, you can note that ladder and a couple of little, like, caution signs here. I use these as little reminders to myself that there's something that needs doing that's important here. Um, so you can see the floor holes that, that um, we have here. Um, and so this is be the output, as you can see. So I've got this marked with an arrow and the input on this side. Um, Mark with an input, so I am going to update these because this is a copper node. So I'm just gonna like mark this. Uh, what I'm doing, and now that that's done, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove these out of here. So um, with that done, um, you know I'm just gonna hop back up here and uh, I'm gonna quickly place the front piece. Uh, maybe I should have done that in advance. I don't know. We're all just living here, I guess. Um, so, uh, in order to do this correctly, I have to be quite careful again um, to make sure that these are placed. Uh, okay, I think this is correct. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we want to have these directly in the center of these foundations. Um, problem do we have here? What did we do wrong? Okay, this one looks to be in the correct position. Uh, this one is not. Okay, so um, knowing that, um, I am going to nuke this. Unfortunately, my work in marking uh, the material here uh, that this is producing is going to waste. But um, this, I guess, gives you a basic idea of the effort involved. Thankfully, that is probably the lowest effort piece that um, we might need to deal with here. Um, okay, hopefully... Let's try this one more time. Okay. So if I go into my blueprints, I'm going to place the back. Uh, at least this time, it should be... right. I'm going to go with my gut. I couldn't quite see. Um, this looks correct. OK, 
Okay, everything's hooked together. Alright, so anyway, uh, thankfully we kind of dodged a bullet there, and uh, mostly didn't have to fight with the worst case scenario of this. Um, so anyway, I'm going to mark this out as I had done before. I'm going to remove these out. Okay, so now we have, um, you know, like most of the pieces together. So, um, I guess I'll also update this sign while I'm at it. Let's hook that up. Okay, so we'll just say this is 60 copper ore to 60 copper ingots. Lovely. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna throw an elevator down into here. Um, if you don't use this mod, I very highly recommend it. It is totally fantastic. Um, really makes, um, you know, these these platforms in particular uh, possible, really. I would not do this if I had to climb a lot of stairs. Um, so that's going to need to be hooked up to power. Uh, and so speaking of power, uh, there's a little uh, sort of power corner here where I've got like a main switch that will control um, this whole structure. Um, which I am going to wire in. So I use this green coloration to indicate that this is the like the the global network grid. Um, and so I'll usually mark that here uh, with a sign so that it's like easy for me to find if I'm looking for for anything. And then uh, I use this magenta uh, to indicate lighting. So I can hook up my lighting uh, to this. Um, you see that I have a couple of lights uh, up here already. Since one is on each blueprint, I need to make sure to wire across. So like a bunch of the connections that you'll see me making in building these floors are having to sort of go across wiring that, that gap. Um, I'm going to set my lighting color and let's switch the grid on. Okay, so we have light. Um, now, I'm going to place a miner down here, and uh, this can be a little bit fussy if I've already placed the, uh, if I've already placed my, uh, yeah, there we go, my uh, foundations. Um, it's not a huge problem, but, um, you know, can be slightly annoying. Um, so I'm going to hook up my input here. Um, and so I'm setting up my elevator for my copper ore to come in. Um, so I will just... Is that straight? That, that's straight. Yeah, alright, cool. Alright, and I want to make sure to put this to uh, this roof input because that is connected through this power switch. So this gives me the ability to completely cut power to the entire facility, uh, including the lighting. But I also have the ability to control lighting separately. So you can see a bunch of inputs up there. Um, that's going to come back. That's very helpful. Um, we're we're going to be using that shortly. Um, uh, I guess I also need to open my elevator up. Um, so let's uh, put that on same. So, going upstairs. Um, I am going to use another lookout tower. Basically every time I construct a floor I will use a lookout tower or sometimes I will just build the elevator extra high. Uh, kind of depends sort of what I'm doing. I suppose if I'm building a bunch of floors at once and the elevator is already extending way up it can be uh, sort of an easy way to deal with this. So going back to those power connectors, so you can see the hookups over here. Actually, um, I didn't intend for this piece to be sticking up here, so I'm actually going to delete this. Uh, that'll get re reproduced later. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to take that out. Um, those markers will, will go back. I'm also marking our out areas of floor here, uh, which are going to be filled with belts um, and like, you know, other sort of like logistical parts of this. Um, so now we're building a production floor. So I have a production floor um, blueprint that I can place down uh, and I'm going to take my advice as much as I can and uh, 
really double check that this is in the right spot, and I'm pretty sure that it is. Okay, so uh, you can see here, um, sort of first and foremost, that there's these indicators for stuff to be hooked up. Um, so there's our output and our input. You can see directly above them there are floor holes that map to that. So I can place another production floor directly on top of this one and it will follow exactly the same interface as this one does. That these holes will be in the exact same spot. So that I know that this belt is my output. I can hook that up. This belt is my input. I can hook that up. This up here is going to continue moving stuff up. So you can see this this belt over here. This will make a little bit more sense in a moment. But basically the idea is that the inputs are going to come in through this hole, go around, feed a bunch of machines, get fed up an elevator, come right back around, and then go up further. So uh, in this case, you want to be using fast belts here. Right now, I don't have particularly fast belts uh, in this game. Uh, but this is easily enough for, for what we're doing here because we're using some crappy impure copper nodes so uh, you know there's not necessarily very much so I'm just deleting out my little markers for stuff to do here that that is all hooked up now um, and I'm going to go ahead and put the front of this building on I always put this ladder in place here just because I always I don't know I have long-standing issues with jumping up onto this freaking platform before the the ramps are put in place uh, you know skill issue I guess um, but uh, anyway so I want to place this down so again uh, let's make absolutely sure that everything's in the right spot I can usually tell by this corner of that railing matching up in front of me that's my best guide for for being able to know that everything's positioned in the right spot Okay, so we now have a whole production floor that's that's in place here. Um, so we have our like stairwell for access to the catwalk upstairs, as well as um, you know, uh, well, I mean, if you have a jetpack, you can get in from up above. Uh, and we have these bottom power hookups. So these power hookups are going to run up to the upstairs power hookups here, and I'm going to disconnect those. So this is the way that I have light control on the bottom floor that runs up through this and continuing on. In fact, actually, maybe I do want those signs back. I probably shouldn't have deleted those out, so let's, uh, let's put them back. I should just copy one of these. Um, I try to reuse signs kind of as much as possible, and I kind of use a color language uh, in amongst uh, my things. Uh, in fact, I have presets for all of the different stuff that I might want to use. So if I'm talking about like base power or like things that would be used for construction, it's always green. If it's lights, it's always magenta. Um, Inputs are always blue, outputs are always uh, always orange. Um, so yeah, um, now you can see only one of the lights is on here. Um, as I was mentioning, we have a little bit of hooking up to do in here. Oh, this is one of these minor things that I would love to fix in this blueprint, and I keep forgetting about it. I, who doesn't want straight lines? Uh, Alright, so anyway, we have our lighting hooked up, we have our belts hooked up, uh, I need to make sure that these belts are connected up on both sides. Okay, that's all hooked up, wonderful. Um, and uh, just for the sake of it, uh, I'm going to give our lights a little reboot here, um, just so that we have our red coloration up above. Um, I'm a little bit confused. 
concerned that that elevator did not connect properly. Um, the odd time I'll have an issue with that, but I'm just going to hook that back up again just to make sure that, that everything is connected there. Um, nope. Okay, never mind. We have input coming in. Wonderful. Um, that looks great. Um, so anyway, we have the input coming in. As I was saying, the, this, this belt will feed across over to this other side, go up this elevator, back around, and up. And it will continue doing on that on every floor, being consumed by machines until there's none left. Um, so, um, given that we've gotten that far, uh, we have our power hooked up and everything like that, um, we can sort of follow our electrical leads here. You see, you can see that the, the power and lighting is hooked up here. Um, I'm going to throw down my smelters. Um, now, I have a blueprint here that is built as a 4x4 four four array, uh, or sorry, uh, an array of four smelters. And there's a few reasons for doing this. Um, you don't always know exactly how many you're going to use, because different materials demand different amounts of smelters to, to do their work. Um, in the case of copper, it's really very easy. Uh, you know that you're going to consume, you know, 30 per minute for each smelter. Uh, but in some cases, that's not necessarily true. The reason that I put four of these down is because it pretty much satisfies every condition uh, by underclocking. Like here, for example, I typically follow a rule of setting everything up so that a floor will consume um, 60 um, 60 of the input, or at least for basic things like this, that's usually how I do it. Could you compress this? I mean, yeah, absolutely, you could make it so that every floor you uses 120 um, in cases where you want to. I just find it easier to think about if I'm doing it 60 at a time. Um, so, um, I'm just going to hook some inputs up here, so we now have fuel coming in. Lastly, I guess we just need to make sure that everything uh, has power now. So we've got our power hookups on the ceiling up here. So we'll just connect those up. And there we go. And we have one production floor in place uh, and ready to go. And if we wanted another one, um, I'm trying to remember. Does this need to be... is it 44? I can't recall. Good guess. And then, if you want to build another floor, it's right there, ready to go for you. The ladder hole is in place, your electrical hookups are right there, you'll just be continuing them up the inside. You'll just hook into these floor holes, more floor holes will be created above you. you continue building up, floor by floor, um, anytime you get more belt capacity, anytime you need more production, scale up. And you never have to worry about taking up more floor space along the ground unless you're building new stuff, like new types of things. Um, so yeah, that's the, that's the, the basic idea here. Um, that I'm trying to go for, um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I guess we can just sort of throw down an output here, uh, you know, just to, just to show, and there we go, we have copper coming out, um, so just to sort of, um, you know, take this sort of to its, uh, you know, it, the, the direction further along, because I'm not going to, you know, like, construct too many items here, uh, or, you know, like, I'm not going to build whole towers to do these things, so I might as well go look at, um, some of what's already, uh, already here doing things. Um, so, we have a couple of facilities here. Um, this one is, uh, producing iron ingots, and then there is a facility behind it that transforms those into iron rods. there's a 
few production units that are kind of tied together um, over here. So I think this is like kind of an interesting demo because, um, you know, very similar to what we just built, we have a copper node here that is producing 120 copper ingots. Um, so this miner uh, is shipping these up. Um, the copper ingots that are coming out are running across over to another production unit, which in this case is producing wire. Um, it's a little bit of an oddball number because some of this wire is going over to a larger production facility, which I'll give you a glimpse of over here, and some of it is going over to produce cable. Um, so you can see this going in here, and, uh, and we're producing cable in this facility as well. Um, as I was saying, there's room for sinks under here, so um, I have these sinks set up so that like any excess production from those should be flowing into the sinks. Um, but um, you know, excess generally is supposed to go into storage first. Um, so hopefully there will be some available. And so this is the kind of situation that you end up with is what I am calling sort of like a little factory cluster um, where this is uh, producing like a couple of goods um, that are sort of like closely aligned with, you know, copper uh, products. Uh, we have copper plates being produced over on this side next to me over here, and all of these things are feeding into, um, like, all the, I think it's tier 3 unlocks for, for oil, so we've got, like, automated wiring, we've got stators, we've got versatile frameworks, we've got modular frames, we've got, I think, probably rips over here, uh, yeah, I think that's right, and this cluster of tall buildings that you can see over here is producing steel. Um, so these are actually my 4x4 four four facilities that are a little bit different. Um, pretty close to the same, but um, with some notable differences, I guess. Um, being that, um, like in these setups, um, I have two inputs for one. Um, and um, so you can see this is uh, producing steel output, and it has uh, an input of iron ore, an input of copper, or um, coal. And in the 4 by 4s I have this harvest little this like, specimen. power cage uh, set up that just sort of like routes power. This is perhaps overcomplicated to look at, but I think it's like a pretty cool little thing to have. Um, while it does also host an elevator, it's got this little thing that you can sort of like run up here and go into this little cage. Uh, this actually exists because in these towers with these like, uh, with these access tunnels like these, if you fall down this, you can fall literally out of the building. Um, and so I put this in as like sort of a final catch to make it so that it won't fall entirely out of the structure. Um, and so this is what the interior of my 4x4 uh, structure looks like. Come on. Fix it, chill. I, I'm not gonna comply. Um, so uh, you can see that I have a lot of floor space available in here. You I are so lucky that, you that found this most valuable must have artifact. been done. That thing is hooked up. Uh, so I only have two um, foundries in here, um, but I needed this construction unit to be bigger because in order to handle two inputs, um, sometimes that can mean quite a few assemblers uh, arrayed next to one another, sometimes it can mean quite a few uh, foundries. Um, in this case, I don't have them all as one blueprint, because this is actually so wide that I can't place them all, so what I do with my blueprints here is that uh, I have a blueprint for two foundries, and so I will place one or two of those depending on my needs. Or I have this one, which is two Harvest. assemblers, and I will place either one or two of those inside these and hook them up, depending on my needs, again. Um, the same strategy basically holds with the belts. I've got all these belts running inside the walls. Um, the inputs are coming up um, and running across to the back, and they continue by folding back over on themselves and continuing up uh, underneath there. Uh, and uh, going going back up uh, and further uh, further up the structure. Uh, and the same goes with the output. Everything pretty much holds together in exactly the same way. Uh, 
uh, and in the case of these 4x4 units, I had room for a stairwell so that I could actually like come up the back side of the building and uh, continue on into uh, my second floor. Um, you know, basically all the signage is like in place when I construct my my things, so pretty much all I have to do when setting these up is like go over and like, no, I can't actually access this because the elevator is in front of it, but all I really need to do with these is like go over to them and just change the numbers and uh, hook up the power, place some machines down, um, just basically just follow um, the indicators that I've set out for myself to, to force me to kind of do the right stuff. Cheers. 